The Philippines is an exotic melting pot. More and more people are pouring into the mega metropolis of Manila. In this first edition of our four-part series, Philippine Life, we'll discover the gateway to this island nation with its 12 million residents, rich traditions and outlook on life. It seems that almost every day a new skyscraper is sprouting up. Manila is among the top 10 largest cities in the world, along with Shenzhen and Istanbul. It's one of the fastest growing metropoles on the planet, with ultra-modern business centers springing up on every street corner. The skyline of Manila is, is, a, is, a, is a varied skyline. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a multifaceted skyline. Manila is a metropolis, actually. Uh, originally starting at the place where the Pasig River goes into Manila Bay, and it's where you have the old city. And Manila grew from there like a radiant, like, it's like a radiant city. Filipinos from rural areas keep making their way to the capital to try their luck. This colorful and bustling city has a very young population. The average age is 23. A new generation of creative minds is leaving its mark on the cityscape. Among them is fashion designer Oliver Tolentino. He's always on the move but comes back frequently looking for new inspiration. He's a strong believer in eco-couture. The materials he uses, such as pineapple fiber and water lily leaves, all come from the Philippines. I grew up in the province where all the tropical flowers, the beautiful scenery, the beautiful beaches in the Philippines are. So I showed the you know, a very colorful collection where you can see the tradition, the heritage of being a Filipino. He sees himself as an ambassador of eco-friendly fashion made in the Philippines and has many fans in Hollywood. I consider myself as a new generation and uh, I, I, I really want to serve as an inspiration for the future designer here in the Philippines. Like Tolentino, many Filipinos take pride in promoting their country abroad. Manila has caught the interest of an increasing number of foreign investors. The Philippines now ranks as one of the world's most promising newly industrialized countries, with strong performances in the electronics and service sectors. But it's not just about numbers. Foreign investors, when they take a decision to invest, look at a number of things. How hospitable is the environment? Having lived in the Philippines for more than 15 years, I can say this is a very hospitable country. Uh, secondly, uh, the human resource in the Philippines. Companies will have access to a large pool of English-speaking, excellent human resource. That's another big advantage of this country. Its rich history has provided the country with a unique cultural heritage. For 300 years, the Philippines belonged to the Spanish crown. Many vestiges are still visible in the old city. After the Spanish reign, a new country took over, the United States. After World War II, the Americans left behind their military jeeps. Locals found a way of recycling them by stripping them down and altering them in order to accommodate more passengers. Metal roofs were added and vibrant colors, and the jeepney was born. To this day, it remains the most popular and the cheapest means of transport in the Philippines. Ed Sarao has a special relationship to the jeepney. His father founded the legendary Sarao Motors brand, up to this day, his vehicles are handmade with much attention to detail. No two jeepneys are alike if you look at the streets of Manila. It's like a tailor-made suit. You can ask everything uh, you want to throw in your jeepney. It's a working horse for the masses. It's a public transportation. Uh, and it's also a pop icon culture of the Filipinos. In the next edition of Philippine Life, we leave the city behind to travel to the country's most famous island of Boracay. This popular holiday destination has become a mecca for wind and kite surfers. Join us as we get caught up in the excitement of the annual Dragon Boat Festival.